As a Christian, you should want to have fun. There should be so much joy in you that at some point in time, it, it almost feels uncontainable. But is there a such thing as going too far to where it's no longer you praising God, but really you making spectacle of yourself? Is that a bit much, getting a workout in at church? Or bringing your roller skates to the church and dancing with the skates on stage. Is that a bit too much? Now, I started off in the Pentecostal church and there's times where you get excited and the music is going and folks just want to dance. Now, there are times where you're wondering, are they just dancing just to be dancing? Are they dancing just to show off? Sometimes the lines are blurred. But this might be one of my all-time favorite goofy videos. In some of these heretical movements, in some of these churches where there's just god-awful teaching, there comes a time where you just, you can't help yourself. You just laugh. You end up laughing at people who you know are on their way to hell. I need somebody to dance down here for Linda. I see her Peter moving. So is he really going to dance with the walker? You, you got to see this. As sad as it is, and let's be honest, it is funny, I could not help but wonder who did it better, the man with the walker or my favorite, Spider-Man. <laughs> It has gotten to the point to where it's crossed over from being different to weird to absurd to now just outright heretical. Yeah, there is a time and a place for dancing. The Bible makes that clear. And we do so to show our joy and to praise the Lord. But it's gotten to the point, again, where they're praising more themselves and showing off themselves, making a spectacle of themselves that in no way brings honor or glory to God. It should be that when someone sees you dancing or shouting, they know who you're dancing and shouting on behalf of or, or, or to who, who you're glorifying. But in, but in these clips, in no way, shape, or fashion is God getting any glory. As a matter of fact, God's not even getting any attention from this. The Bible tells us that a wicked and unrighteous generation looks after and looks for signs. Now, when signs don't come from heaven, what do they do? They manufacture signs. They manufacture different feats. They manufacture different gimmicks, anything to bring attention to what it is they're doing. Because again, for them, the gospel, the word of God is not enough. Impartation. Te va a recibir esa impartición de la Argentina. Oh. Paul tells us this in 2 Timothy chapter 3. Let's start in verse 12. He says, Indeed, all who desire to live godly, a godly life, in Jesus Christ or in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. While, and here it is, while evil people and impostors will go on from bad to worse. That's important. 
deceiving and being deceived. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have firmly believed, knowing from whom you learned it. And then, of course, in verse 16, it says, all scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for what? For teaching, for reproof, for correction and for training in righteousness, that the man or woman of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. So there are these people that are that are deceived themselves. Uh, many of them also, though, it should be noted, aren't deceived. They know full well what they're doing, but they are also deceiving others and they get this cult like following and they can have them do just about anything. Don't believe me. But they're going to eat special break before they eat this. If Jesus can turn water into one, fish into his body, huh? loaves from the boy into what? Into what? Into his body. People can eat. So I'm going to give them food from above. I think we are fasting, but they're going to eat the fulfillment from above. Wake up! Stand up! Close your mouth. Okay, I see food outside. Look at that. Look at that food. Be quiet. Be quiet. Okay, go and eat. Go and eat. Go eat outside. Go quickly. Now, this is real. These people at the command of their imposter, ungodly, evil pastor had them while they were fasting to go out and eat grass. Again, they are being deceived by someone who was deceived. And God calls that person evil, wicked imposter. Oh, Jesus. Oh, dear Jesus. Oh, Lord. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yes, Lord. I've learned a, a quick prayer. I'll teach it to all you really quickly. Okie dokie, Lord. Okie dokie. Lord, I love your heavy, drunken glory. Now, could you imagine that guy being your pastor or your preacher? How How is it that you sit there and don't get up and walk out? How is it that you... Or I can get it because if it were me, I wouldn't get up and walk out. I'll be honest with you. I would sit there and laugh. I'd get my popcorn and laugh because clearly we're not at church. We're at the movies. We're at a show. And so I'm looking for the usher to bring some food and some drinks so I can kick my feet back, uh, put my Bible to the side because there's no word of God here. And so I'm going to enjoy myself. Make Matter of fact, pull my phone out and record this as someone did. Now, and I don't know if this person even knows what he's doing. There are some people who genuinely know what they're doing. And then there's some people who just don't know. They, they may very well think that what they're doing is right and proper. For example, could you imagine your grandmother, a grandmother, who happens to know how to play the guitar, wants you to praise God? Imagine how awkward that might look. Well, let me show you how it looks. I'm wondering if the boy is just scared, confused, both. I don't know what to do. I'll just sit here and just clap. Because if not, grandma's going to beat me. Take it live. He cannot move on you. He cannot move on you. 
Loose it now, I say right now. In the blood of Jesus. Jesus. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. Ah! Oh, Jesus. bless it. Oh! Ooh, ooh, Jesus. Jesus. And while all that is funny and hilarious, and I'm just going to be honest, guys, let's just be honest, that is hilarious. It just is. It's sad, but it's hilarious. And I feel a little bit bad at the fact that we're laughing at people who are literally on their way to hell if they don't change what it is they're doing. But then there's a more even sinister and diabolical side where there are people who aren't using this as a means to promote the kingdom, but as a means to, pr to promote themselves. Yep, you saw it. The man had a crown on his head. He comes in as he's a king, as though he's a king. And people treat him that way. And no matter what he does, they're going to honor it, even with his fake moving of the feet to slay people in the spirit. <laughs> I want to kill you now. I'm about to kill you. Yes, yo, yo, yo. And this stuff is all over the world. It's here in, in Texas. It's in Illinois. It's in California. It's in Florida. It's in, in Africa. It's in Europe. It's all over. And it's as though no one is actually reading their Bible. But here's the scary part for them and the hopeful part for us. God is not going to continuously be mocked. We're told in Galatians 6, 7, do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever one sows, that will he also reap. For the one who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption. But the one who sows the spirit will from the spirit reap eternal life. Let us not grow weary, weary in well-doing for in due season, we will reap if we don't, if we do not give up. So guys, we don't have to feel too bad. We don't have to faint. We don't have, we can just, we can take heart at the fact that God is going to one, deal with them, but we keep doing the job that we're supposed to do and be the light that people need to see. They need to see more of good, sound teaching, the way that people ought to behave and comport themselves versus more of these sort of shenanigans. And all the while, we need to be diligent and do what the writer of Jude says. It says, Beloved, although I, I was very eager to write you about our common salvation, I have to write for a different reason. Instead, I found it necessary to write appealing to you to do what? To contend for the faith that was once for all delivered to the saints. For certain people have crept in unnoticed who long ago were designated for this condemnation, ungodly people who pervert the grace of our God into sensuality and deny our only master and Lord, Jesus Christ. And so he writes to tell us to contend for the faith, to fight. And so, yeah, while we look at this stuff, it's crazy, it's funny. But the fact of the matter is they're on their way to hell if nothing changes. And they're leading millions, millions of people to hell as well. I doubt that there'll be anyone dancing with a walker or that Spidey will be dancing. No, rather in hell, there, as he says, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. But for the rest of us, contend for the faith. Fulfill our ministry as an evangelist. Share the gospel, live the gospel. And show people how you ought to behave as believers. Amen. Amen.